What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a brand new video. I have been dying to make this video now for about two and a half weeks and it has been raining every single day. And not just raining, torrential rain bomb with severe flooding all around Brisbane and parts of New South Wales. And conditions are extremely dangerous. The Brisbane River is expected to peak around four metres with more than 1,400 homes expected to be inundated. Today we're looking at the B1 Titan four-wheel drive. And let me tell you, this board has got some balls. You got balls, kid. We're going to break today's video down into seven categories. Appearance, handling, battery, motors, torque, carryability, and then we're going to wrap it up with a SWOT analysis. So first things first, let's talk about the appearance. Well, as you can see, I mean, I think it's a pretty beautiful looking board. It reminds me of Spider-Man. He ain't Spider-Man anymore. With that black and the red, it really is, uh, I guess, an extension of the Belrog using that red underneath the black grip and all the iodized red. The underneath of the board is just absolutely beautiful. As you can see there, it's a really nice forged carbon fiber. There's one ESC there, second ESC is in there, and that's the massive battery, which we'll talk about very shortly. Here are these TKP, traditional kingpin trucks. I'm so happy they stuck to these because they are so stable, front and rear. And here are the 6374 motors, one, two, three, four, 1500 watts each. That's what makes this thing take off like a rocket. Before we talk about handling, let's really quickly talk about the ESC they're using. It is the latest Hobbywing, Hobbywing 2 of this new series. So that means it's got the auto on. It also has the auto detect for four wheel drive. So when you turn the remote on, it turns on the battery and activates both, both ESCs, which is really nice. The board is wired up to one charge port. There are a couple other four wheel drive boards out that have dual, which is really annoying because most of them you only get one charger and it has three speed modes on that ESC. So it's got one, two, three and a triple tap will give you a turbo mode. Now that turbo mode is insane and it's got a very high top speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Right, gang, let's talk about the handling of this board. As I mentioned, it has got traditional kingpin trucks, so it has a really nice carve. Not super loose like a double kingpin, and definitely a lot more responsive than a reverse kingpin truck, and super stable at high speeds. So far, I've had this thing up to 55 kilometers. We'll try to do it today. I don't have my knee pad, so I'm not sure if I want to do that today, but you know from the Zeus video, that traditional kingpins are just so stable. But this one is just loose enough that you can still have a lot of fun. Now I have to point out something very important about this board. As I mentioned, there is one, and I'm gonna call it a major flaw. It doesn't stop me from liking it, but it's something that has to be addressed, either by the owner or by the factory, because I don't feel confident carving hard on this board because of this issue. And I'm gonna show you what it is right now. Being four wheel drive, this is the rear of the board here. This is the front of the board. And as you can see, when I do a hard carve, the motor is actually hitting the deck. And it's like a deck bite. A bite! So like wheel bite hits the deck and stops you, the deck is hitting this motor. And it's not stopping you, but it is wearing down that carbon fiber and leaving a horrible mark on the motor, as you can see there. That deck is hanging over those motors by about, I'm gonna say nine millimeters. But if you look at the rear, the deck is actually not hanging over the motors at all. So either they need to push the front trucks out by a few millimeters, or they need to put more riser pads in. Because as it is right now, we can't actually fully test the carvability. Now with that deck issue identified, as I said, it's not the end of the world. And it can be resolved quite simply by moving those trucks forward at the factory or adding additional riser pads on if you've already bought this board. But if you've got one, I would strongly suggest that you do address it. Now let's move on to the next topic and that's battery. And this is where this board really does uh, exceed. They've done a really nice job in picking a good battery setup. It's rocking a 13S 4P battery made up of the Samsung 40T cells and it's 768 watt hours. So it's got a really nice number there, good, discharge rate on the 40Ts. And of course we know they're 21700 cells. So it's gonna have really nice acceleration, 
all the way through the acceleration curve. Now the next topic I wanna to talk about is the motors. I briefly touched on them at the beginning. It's got four, six, three, seven, four motors. Each one is 1500 watts. So you're looking at 15, 15, 15, 15. So you're looking at 6,000 watts total power. Now yes, I know the ESC isn't probably filling those motors properly, but the potential is there. This would be a very, very easy upgrade if you needed to, which I don't think you do. The torque is incredible on this board and the top speed is also very, very nice. But if you did want to upgrade them to a VESC, these motors and this battery could certainly handle it. quickly something else I wanted to show you they have continued on the brake light on these boards so when you brake it flashes as you can see right there and this is really well seen at night time something I didn't know when I reviewed the Belrog and this is a really cool feature and I actually think I mentioned that I wish it did it is you can actually turn that light on so it's on full time by double clicking the power button you now have a rear light when you brake it flashes so at night time you can be seen even when you're not braking. All right, now it's time for the fun one, torque. I'm just gonna find a nice, long, straight road, and we're gonna punch this thing up to probably about 50K an hour, depending on traffic and depending on how I feel. As I mentioned, I did forget my knee pads today, but I'm still gonna show you how fast this thing accelerates in turbo mode. All right, guys, here we go with the torque test. Nice, long, straight road, as you can see there. We've got about 200 meters, I'm guessing. Now I'm not gonna get up to full speed because I don't have my knee pads on. You should be able to see the speed on the screen right now. It's come to a complete stop. Here we go, like right, three, two, one. Woo, okay, this thing's got power. Let's try it again. Three, two, one. <laughs> Woo! All right, that's fast enough without knee pads. And there's a car pulling out. This wasn't a top speed test, this is purely a torque test. What do we get up to? Let's look at the phone. It felt like about 43, 45, okay. So that was 45, it had lots more to go. But as I mentioned, that was not a top speed test. This thing will go for it. topic we want to talk about being a four-wheel drive board it has the risk of being very hard to live with what I mean by that is to carry around take into shops and so on now this weighs 16 kilos which I think is pretty reasonable for a four-wheel drive board with a 768 watt hour battery now 16 kilos yes it's heavy but you can still pick it up if you wanted to and you can carry it but where this really impresses me is that it's got enough ground clearance at the rear that you can pick it up by the front and nothing hits the ground as you walk. Now remember, I'm six foot, so the fact that I can do this means most people will be able to do it. The carryability or livability, I think is not a problem for such a powerful board. Two things I forgot to put on our list at the beginning. Two categories was braking and hill climb. Well, you know the hill climb is gonna be good, but what we'll do is we'll do a separate video on that. We'll go to the same hill. I took the Eovan GTS Super up so we can compare it and see exactly how this thing goes. The second one was braking. Now, I'm gonna show you a braking test right now, but I'll tell you before I do it, it feels just like a hobby wing. It's smooth, but I think it could be a smidge stronger. And this is the same thing I discovered with the Vestar four-wheel drive. 
very smooth brakes, definitely stronger than a two-wheel drive hobby wing, obviously, but I still think it could be a little bit stronger. We'll come up on a straight here, I'm gonna show you how strong they are. All right guys, here is the braking test in four-wheel drive. We're sitting on 40, let's go 45 kilometers per hour right there. So that's 45 kilometers, and I'm gonna hit the brakes. I'm gonna tell you when, I'm gonna pick a landmark. Okay, three, two, one, brake. Solid brake, solid brake, solid brake, solid brake. Okay, there you go. So that is, let's just move the board over here. I can show you exactly where I hit the brakes. Move that right out of the way, because it could be bikes. So, that was 45 kilometers per hour, which when you think about it in a car, that's pretty quick. Cars obviously have much stronger brakes, hydraulics, ABS, that sort of thing. This is exactly where, this pallet line, uh, right here, this is where I hit the brakes hard. So you can see it's, it's a little bit of a distance. So I would say it's probably about 15 meters. Super smooth, but not super strong. So just be aware of that. So guys, that's the last test we're doing. Let's head back towards where the car is and give you my SWOT analysis. There's a whole heap to love about this board. And as I said, I think there's only really one area it needs to be addressed, and that's that board bite. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this first look at the B1 Titan four-wheel drive. As always, we'll do a quick SWOT analysis. Before we do that, though, if you've liked this video, please hit the subscribe button. We're still desperately chasing that 10,000 subscriber number. As you may know, as soon as we hit 10,000 subs, we're gonna be doing a board giveaway. Free skateboard delivered to your door, free of charge, just for being a subscriber of this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button now. Right, let's jump into the SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The strengths on this board, well, the four wheel drive is amazing. The power is insane. The ESC is very smooth and predictable. The battery is fantastic being that 13S 4P, 768 watt hour battery. You should get very, very good range. The fact that they've customized this ESC to give good top speed as well. Anybody can throw a couple of Hobby Wing ESCs in, but you'll struggle to get past that 40 kilometer mark. The fact that this gets up close to 60 is quite incredible. I would say I love the trucks and the handling, but until they resolve that deck bite or that board bite, I actually have to put that down as a weakness or even a threat. With that in mind, let's move on to weaknesses. What are the weaknesses of this board? Well, it really is just that deck bite, that, that board bite hitting the motor, for me, is a massive weakness. And as I said, it's probably almost even a threat. It needs to be addressed. I'm really hoping I can chuck an extra riser pad on and that will solve it. If the riser pad doesn't work, then we'll have to find a way, or B1 will have to find a way, to push that front truck out so that when you're doing a, a medium to hard turn, it doesn't hit the motors. That really is the only weakness that I can think about. So let's move on to opportunities. What are the opportunities on this board? Well, this really is very small, but I have to mention it. I would like to see a different look. Maybe it's just an option. I'm sure not everybody wants to have a board that looks like it's been designed by Spider-Man. It's kind of cool and I personally don't mind it, but I think a lot of people will find it quite polarizing and may not purchase the board because of it. And of course, the last point we always talk about is threats. The only threat with this board is that board bite. I know I keep going on about it, but I was so disappointed when I saw it. I'll just pull over and show you it one more time. There it is there. You can see where the carbon fiber has hit the motor. So right here. And I, I honestly believe it should be an easy fix. I really hope a couple of riser pads will just lift it up enough that it stops hitting. Because as you can see, if I turn five foot there, it's, it's hitting right now. And that's not that sharp. And once they resolve that, I'm happy to say that this is actually the best four wheel drive two in one board I've tested. When you take into consideration the four 6368 motors, the big battery, the forged carbon deck, and the TKP trucks, once they address that board bite issue, I think this will be the best four wheel drive board on the market.
I hope you've enjoyed it. As I mentioned, we've got lots of other content coming up on it. We're going to do a hill climb, we're going to do a range test, and we'll probably do some off-roading there somewhere as well. As always, if you've got any comments or questions or remarks, chuck them down below. I respond to every single one. If you are thinking about getting this or any B1 board, please make sure you use Scott D as a discount code. It gives you a nice little savings and it supports this channel. So I really appreciate it when you do that. But that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Skate safe and we'll see you on the next video. Scotty. Scotty.